Now I've got my little bitty eight millimeter finger plane, which incidentally I sharpened yesterday and it's crazy sharp. And I'm just trimming off any little excess that I don't want in my way. <laughs> I try to make everything a little large and you can always trim it down and these shims are pretty close to fitting but they needed just a tiny bit of trimming I have to get up there trim the end because I can't get the finger plane all the way up to the end that's good and the end here is a little long and I just want to make sure that they're not going to be the problem of me getting down in the joint. So that's trimmed sufficiently. There's a little glue squeeze out that I want to clean up too. You really have to have ducks in a row when you're doing this sort of thing so that you don't get tricked by some other problem. In other words, that glue could be the thing that would be holding me out and I don't want that to be the problem. So I'm going to get rid of the glue. Okay, so the 250 thousandths shims are glued on there now. Oh, just because I can, I'm gonna round off my shims here on this end because, again, I don't want these shims to be hanging on anything. And if I round them off, then their chances of them catching on anything will be pretty slim. So I think we're ready for installing and we know we're not going to go down tight because we know it's thick but look how much play there is that's really unsettling uh, but there won't be much play when we're done I've got a lifetime supply of carbon paper someone recently gave me some more carbon paper and I do appreciate it but uh, that's what we're going to use here. I'm looking for the good stuff. There's good carbon paper and stuff that's kind of okay. And so I'm trying to find the good stuff here to put it down in here because uh, I need to be sure that it's going to mark everything properly. I'm going to make the marks on this, uh, on this part here, so that uh, I can carve this away. I don't want to change the dovetail joint down in the block here, unless I have to, unless I see a real problem, which right now has not revealed itself. So we're going to assume there's no real problem. And here we go, first insertion there. Actually, I'm going to trim this down a little thinner yet because it's sticking out and I don't want it to crinkle up too much. And then maybe even take it a little bit off the top here so that the top's not sticking out too much either. Yeah, that's much better. And maybe just trim a little bit of this off just so that that's not going to be much of an issue either. And now let's insert this in here and see what happens. And I'm going to wiggle it around. And yeah, it's catching right on the bottom, so the top's not grabbing at all. That's why it's wiggling, which is kind of what I was suspecting. We can easily remedy that problem. And let's see now, I'll just do it dry first and see how that seems to fit, if that changed things. Yeah, that's already making a difference, I can tell. And by the way, look at that, the neck joints already tightened way up. So we're getting closer already. What I try to do is put it in there and wiggle it around a little bit to make a good mark. And you can see a pretty good mark there, and probably here, maybe a little bit up there. Yeah, it's going in quite a bit further each time. So, it may not take too long on this one, I hope.
Oh, I put it on the wrong side that time. I turned the carbon paper the wrong way. But that's sometimes good anyway because you can see where the high spots are and there's high spots in this it looks to me like. So I'm gonna carve those away. And we'll go dry again first and see what happens. It's, uh, it's getting sticky already. It's starting to grab now, which is what you want. All right, make sure I turn the curving paper the other direction this time. And it's starting to make a pretty big pattern. That's a good sign when you get a good pattern like that where it's spreading out, then you know you're, you know, you're in the ballpark. You're starting to get a, a tight joint. I'm going to round off these corners again because there's a chance they could be catching and I don't want the corners to catch and be the problem. spread out all over so that's a good thing if they're all in one spot that would be indicated indication of an uneven joint and so having them spread out like this indicates that it's all fairly symmetrical they say time will heal time only makes me wish you were near try again we're down to a quarter inch about started at a half so that's we're in the ballpark now you can see it's getting pretty tight I it, it actually picks up the whole guitar with the neck now it couldn't have done that before I can tell you I can already see a mark or two even just doing it dry I think I'll turn the carbon paper around the wrong way again or the with the ink side out uh, so that uh, I can mark the block again before we get too far along in case there is a problem in the block. Mark up high here. That's a good one to get out of there because that'll stop it from going down in there. I tried to stop thinking of you, but every little thing I do makes me Each time it goes just a hair further. This is a very long, laborious process, so if you're an impatient person, you probably don't want to set out on this journey because this will take you a while, even on a good day. I can't try to Didn't change too much that time. We're still pretty close to a quarter inch, I would say. Well, I'm going to keep doing the same thing you're watching me do there, and I'm just going to keep doing it till I get much closer, and then I'll turn the camera back on. It's been at least another hour since I had the camera on, and you can see the marks that are on there and the marks that are on there. I have a feeling when I get those marks off, we're done. That's just a feeling, because we're still a ways away but it's going in pretty smooth now and it's tight and I think the angle's right, I think everything's good and I kinda think this might be the last shaving here. It might be. I could be wrong. It'll be close. A little sanding block that that fellow made for me with the 3D printing sure does work well. I think I've got a little bit too light of sandpaper on it at the moment though. I need to go a little heavier. It probably won't go yet, but it'll be close. I'll take this sandpaper. This is a little bit stiffer sandpaper. This is 220. 
So let's see if by chance it would actually go. Ah, uh, we're still a ways. Uh, just a tiny ways away. You can see how close it is to going there. It's a uh, sixteenth of an inch probably. On this side it seems to be a little bit more on this side than on this side. It's very tight. The joint's very tight now. Let's see if I can see a shiny spot there from sliding it in. That often is your indicator of where your problem is. Turn it off the corners again because they can actually be the area that catches and you can't really tell it sometimes. Uh, yeah, it's just about a sixteenth. It's, so I'll have to mark it yet again and do that yet again. Let's look at the angle here. And yeah, we're still clearing the bridge and that's what we want, but we're only clearing it by a tiny bit more than the space we have. So that's good though. As long as it clears it when we're done, I'm happy with that. All right, one more in and out and I think we may have it. Well, it went and uh, it's clearing it by 20 thousandths or so. Uh, it's not a lot, I'll be honest, but it's clearing it. And I don't know if this will be enough to tell me, but it's, it's clearing it. It's clearing it about 30 thousandths, so I'm okay with that. Um, you know, this bridge is a little tall, so if we had to cut it down just a fraction, it wouldn't be no big deal. So. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Alignment wise, it, up until now at least, it's always been right down the center, so I think it'll still be down the center. Looks pretty dang good to me. I think I'm ready to put the glue in it and get her glued back in place. So, I'm pretty dang happy with that. So, when you stop and think about it, we've changed the angle more than you realize because this is a taller bridge. This thing used to go into a it used to go into the side of a short bridge. So, you know, we've changed the angle quite a bit. So I'm real happy with it and it fits real tight. Uh, you can see I can pick up the whole instrument without any fear of it coming out of there. It's jammed in there tight and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a perfect fit. I've, you know, checked it many, many times. You couldn't get one to fit much tighter. And that's what you need to keep out the glue creep. So here we go on putting this back together. I am tickled to get this thing past this point. I'm I've already cleaned this top off. I'm gonna go ahead and get the glue spread around. The only thing I didn't do on this that I do on my own is I didn't clean off the varnish on the front edges here. And, uh, you know, that's the way they made it and that's the way it was fit up. So I've just decided not to mess with that. But otherwise, I, I typically clean, uh, you know, glue that face too. Makes the neck harder to come out, but it also makes a stronger neck joint too. All right, so now we get the glue on these surfaces as well. Not much point in putting the glue on the back surface on the way these are made because there is an air gap there. Again, brushing it again to make sure there's no air bubbles. Lastly, I'll put it on this front face even though it's only being glued to the, to the varnish. It's still better than nothing. I believe that's all we can do. Now we can slide her home and squeeze her together. And I'll put a lot of force on it here. Squeezing it like this. That should get it. Now I'm just gonna double check this just to be sure. Because it'd be my luck it would change. And so far that looks good. All right, so let me get something to clamp this down a little better. Well, I got quite a few clamps on here. I got this band clamp on here only to just keep the neck heel pulled in tight. Um, you know, I've got this neck, this clamp pushing down the neck joint down into the slot real tight. Then of course these two clamps clamping the extension to the top. 
So it's about as good as I can clamp it. And we'll just have to wait till tomorrow to see what we ended up with. I checked it all again just before I put the clamps on it where I couldn't check it anymore. And uh, everything looked okay, so that's all we can do. Well, here we are the next day again. The neck has been uh, drying overnight. I think we're in pretty darn good shape. I'm going to go around and do a little bit of cleanup and things like that. And I'm probably going to do a fret leveling and then we're going to set the intonation on this and get the uh, slot cut in this bridge. So I got a lot of things to do. For the most part, I'm just going to do that off camera, uh, mostly clean up and things like that. And then once I get into the meat of the work, I'll uh, turn the camera back on. Well, my friends, I have cleaned this thing up, detailed it to a lot uh, of degree uh, and, you know, touched up everything, sanded everything, just done as much as I can really do. And now I'm going to try this wax. This was sent to me by a viewer. It's uh, in uh, Ubo Polishes, B-E-A-U-T. Or U Butte, U Butte polishes is probably the way the uh, Aussies would say it. This came from Australia. Uh, traditional wax. So, anyway, we're going to give this a shot. I have never used it before, and there's always a first time. I don't know if it'll be difficult to get off or buff off. So, I'm going to try it in a small area here first and uh, give it a shot. Feels good going on, I can tell you that. I like the way it feels going on. And I'm just gonna just do this one little area right here. And then I'm gonna buff it off right away. Buffs off easy. I, uh, I like that already. Doesn't seem like it's going to be a problem getting it off, so I'll go ahead and do a little bigger area. You still don't want to do a great big area with paste wax. You just don't want to do that. You want to rub it in real, real well, and then buff it off. Keep your rag turning the whole time you're buffing it off. You know, just try different surfaces because uh, it will uh, accumulate on your rag a little bit. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you and tell you I had already buffed it pretty good on the buffer, so I'm not seeing a much difference in appearance from once where it's been uh, polished and where it hasn't, where it's been waxed and where it hasn't is what I should say. There's a little drop of glue I think got on that, so I'm going to get rid of that. I'll just take a guitar pick and see if I can scrape it off. There it is, popped it right off. Just a little, just a tiny dab of glue. It could just be because I had buffed it out so much that I'm not really seeing much of a difference in the shine. But it is shining really nice. I do like the ease of on and off. Uh, I really like it. Uh, yeah. I, I got to be honest, I think I like it at least as well as I like the uh, the uh, Renaissance wax. I like it a lot. It's very good. Most paste waxes do not come off as easy as this comes off. And I like that. It does seem to buff out pretty good. Keeping the rag turning around like that, that helps. I'm going to get a Completely dry, clean rag now and go over the whole thing. Well, that's what she looks like after being waxed with the uh, U-Butte wax from Australia. There's what she looks like. If you want to look, go out there and search for it on YouTube, it's U-Butte wax or U-Butte polishes. And uh, traditional wax, 250 milli uh, milliliter, and neutral, it says. So I will, uh, if I can find this online, I'll put a link to it in my, uh, on my products I use webpage because I like it. It's good stuff. Started to do a fret leveling, and I'm hitting a high fret way back here. It's uh, quite high. Rocks pretty good.
The uh, fret I took out seems pretty high. That's kind of normal. It seems like that happens often. As far as I can tell, it's seated down in there as well as it can be, but I'm gonna go just try my little aluminum tool and see if I can seat it a little bit more. Still rocking a little bit on it. That's probably to be expected because, you know, you gotta remember I'm bending this more now than it used to bend. So that typically creates a little high spot right here. Leon is quite a picker. This is who belong this guitar belongs to Leon. He's the typically the banjo player in our band, but he's also a very good guitar player. So I'm trying to make it just as perfect as I can for him because I know he is a hard driving guitar player. So uh, you've seen me do all this fret job before, so I'm not gonna film much more of that, but uh, I'm going to uh, work on that primarily off camera. If I run into anything I think you would like to know about, I'll sure show you. <clears throat> I'm setting the intonation on this puppy and we're really close, I think, already. So, by the way, this little stuff here that you see here is just filler around where you had to take that fret out. There's a little bit of chipping, a little scarring, so I just fill the whole area and then I'll clean that up and then whatever's left, I'll just dye black and uh, it'll be no problem, you never see it. See, it's right on the money. Pretty close. Well, I'll always like to test them a few times and make sure that it's not going to change. Now look how much angle there is on that saddle. That's quite a bit of an angle. Uh, so the odds are that the intonation with the original bridge and saddle could never have been really right. There is a, a pretty good angle to that, but there's more angle here. So you can see there's, there's, there is quite a bit of angle here, don't get me wrong, but there's more here. So that's why I didn't get in any hurry about doing anything on this. You know, I wanted to do it the long way, the hard way, uh, the slow way, but yet it's the best way. That's perfect. Pretty dang perfect. That's really, really good right there. So I'm gonna take my fine pencil, mark under the string right here, mark under the string right here, and this is the front edge. And again, just so you know, the front edge is all that matters because that's where the string stops. And so wherever the string stops, that's where you want to, uh, you know, have your saddle. Now I build my saddles where they slope to the front and they end at the front. I don't like them domed in the middle because it's really hard to set the perfect intonation on it on a saddle that's arched. So if you if you have your saddle sloped like this, then that last place the string touches the saddle is your intonation, and that's what I'm doing here. And uh, I've got it marked really well and now I'm going to take all this rig off of here and draw a, you know, a, a, as long of a saddle as I can put in here. The more the length you put on here, the better it spreads the sound across also. At some point you would run off the edge here, so you can't go all the way to the very far end. So, you know, I'm just going to get, actually it's about perfect where it's at. So. Um, the only difference is this side here is coming closer over here. I just have the saddle just sitting there, of course. Anyway, the point is you got to make it as symmetrical as you can and, you know, you don't want it running out the front edge of your bridge. With those constraints, I'll get this going and I'll show you what that looks like. I've got the string holes laid out where I believe they need to go. I'm maybe tweaking it just a teeny bit right now because I can look through down through here and see where they're at. And uh, they look really lined up to me. I think that's where I'm gonna go, right there. 
Alright, so all I really want to do is get the first hole drilled, and I was afraid of that. This is going to be in my way, and eh, maybe not on this side. I got the clamp a little bit off center. I can drill this side first. Uh, it's even still a little bit in the way, so I'm going to move the clamp just a little bit. Like that. Lock her down good and tight, make sure it didn't move, and then I'll drill this side here. I can see I'm into the paduke because I'm getting some of that color out of there. The bit's getting clogged up, so I'm wanting to clean it out. I don't like to force them through. Okay, I'm drilling into my backer now because I'm getting the white now. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do there is put a pin in. That pin should keep it locked in place and shouldn't let it move. So what I'll do now is move my clamp a little bit and try not to let it turn sideways here. And clamp it back down, make sure I'm still lined up with the length of, length of them and everything. That looks good. Tighten it down. We'll drill this other hole. I'm going to clean it again because it's, you know, there's glue in there uh, in between and that glue is what's clogging up the bed, I think. I think we're getting the white now, so we're good. <sighs> Alright, so I'll put this pin in also. And that should keep it in place and let me take these out, take that out and take this block out on the inside. And... That should keep it in place for me. Now it shouldn't move, and I should be able to drill the other holes. Oops, I went all the way through on that one. Oh, that's right, because there's no backer board there now. I wasn't thinking. I think Tom Duran was the one that made this for me, and I really appreciate that, Tom. I've used this a lot of times. I'm going to use this uh, for the, uh, what I use, I use it for uh, beveling these edges. I have never found anything that drills a better hole than this. You know, I've used, I've got at least, I would say probably a dozen different chamfering bits and they all either chatter or chip or leave some annoying looking mark. This is clean and slick. It doesn't leave anything. It's perfect. So I haven't found anything I like better than this and I've tried dozens of items. Now I'm going to take my uh, reamer here. You know I may actually end up doing that all again because I may not have the holes big enough. I don't really think I do. So I'll probably do all of that again off camera, exactly the same process, and just make those holes a little bit bigger and uh, bevel them out a little bit bigger and the whole bit. If I do anything that I think you need to see, I'll sure show it to you. Well, you can see I am set to cut this slot, triple checking it here to make sure that it's gonna follow the line. It looks perfect. I've got it set to be able to plunge it down a hundred thousandths, so that's what we're going to do. Every time you're not around, I'm by myself, I get to be the Okay, that's always nerve wracking. <sighs> that's a hundred thousandths. We're going to plunge it another hundred. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a minute. Here we go. If someone calls out your name, well, I get to think another day's gone by. You were standing by my side, I'm blue all over again. Trying to decide if I want to go that far again. Probably not quite that far. I think I'll set it to go about 50 thousandths deeper. Here we go again. I'm blue. That 
turned out real nice. I would have liked to have made the saddle a little longer, I'll be honest, but the problem is that if I go much further this way, we were going to be cutting into and weakening the front of the bridge, and I didn't want to do that. So where I left it, the bridge is plenty strong, and it's still plenty long. I would like it longer, but you got to do what you got to do. Well, we're starting to put the strings on here. I made a saddle, I got that worked up. I oiled the fretboard and the bridge and everything. I, uh, this is the first time that I think this has ever happened, or at least in my memory, that I've lost the bridge pins that go to this guitar. Now that's assuming it had any. When he brought it here, he might have had the strings off of, I don't remember. But anyway, the bottom line is, uh, I've just found these bridge pins to put on here. They're nice pins, so they should be fine. Yeah, I don't know. Things happen. That's all I can say. Another thing I noticed was that these tuners, all the tuners were loose, all the screws were loose. Well, not all of them, but I think five out of six of them were loose, so I tightened those up a little bit. Those should be at least snug. That takes a lot of play out of the tuning keys up here. There was a lot of wobbling, flopping around going on. Well, I'll show you what, we're, what it looks like and let you hear it when we get her strung up. Got her all strung up. I can tell the action's pretty high. That's better than being too low, because I'd have to start over if it was too low. But I'm pretty sure it's real high. Yeah, it's pretty high. I'm gonna call it 150 thousandths. That's quite high. Didn't think it would be that high, because I based it on the other saddle I set it up with, which was pretty close. So, Sometimes you get fooled. I'm gonna write that down here if I can find something to write on. So this side is 150. The other side is not quite as bad, but it's up there. I'm gonna call it 125. All right, so I wanna get it down to 90 and 80. So that's 60 thousands high on this side here and that means I need to take 120 off of this which is a lot don't think I've ever had to take that much off of one before so I missed it by a pretty big shot on this one so that's quite a bit and this one here is 45 thousands high so I need to take about 90 off of this one so I'll do that and we'll come back and show you the next step Okay, round two, I was a little conservative on taking height off because I was just afraid I'd go too far and then I'd have trouble. So I took off less than I needed just to be safe. And let me see, we're still gonna need to take some more off, but I'd rather do it twice than to get it wrong. That's 110 thousandths. So it's about 20 thousandths high. And on this side, we're not too far off on this side. We're about 90. You know, just 10 thousandths high there, so we'll take off 20 there. So we'll minus 20 and uh, minus 40. So we're 20 thousandths high on the base side, and so we'll take 40 off and 20 thousandths high on the other side. Uh, so we'll take... Uh, I mean, we're 10 thousandths high on the other side, so we'll take 20 thousandths off. Anyway, I got it written down. I won't screw it up. 40 and 20 is what we got to take off. So I'm going to take it out again and do this all one more time. And this will be the last time, I'm pretty sure. But before I do that, now that I think about it, I meant to do this, uh, is to check the action at the first fret because I want to make sure it's not real low, too low or something. It's pretty close already. I don't think taking off any will hurt it. I think it'll bring us just about where we want to be. So I don't think there's going to be a problem. Okay, I haven't actually played it, but I've corded it a 
time or two and it sounds pretty darn good. There's a couple little minor tweaks that I think I want to do yet. First of all, uh, Leon asked me to make sure there was plenty of string break right here. And there is on these, on the coated, or on the wrap strings, all of them have a real good break. And even the B string has a pretty good break, but the E string has a break, it's just not as much as the others. So I'm gonna fix that. So now let me show you the uh, intonation here. Really close to center. Really close. Very close. Now the uh, B string is a little bit sharp, but that's common on B strings, so I'm going to fix that. See, it's a little sharp. About 10 cents. Pretty dang close. All of them are very, very, very close except for the B string. It's a little sharp, which is very common. So I'm just going to file the B string back a little bit. And I'm also going to work on the break on the two silver strings. So let's go ahead and get that done. I like everything about the guitar, ex the way I've set everything up, except the saddle length. It's just not long enough to suit me. And I'm going to extend it an eighth inch on each end, and uh, that'll fix the problem. Um, and it'll still be strong enough down here. I'm not worried about that, but I just, uh, I was a little gun shy before I had it all set up. So that's all I have to do is just do that and then I think I'll be fine. Well I gotta explain that this is the uh, pucker factor again. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, it's this will make you pucker up. So uh, because I've already got it finished basically and now I'm trying to tweak it and those kind of things can come back to haunt you. I hope not. Here we go. And you got to plug it in first. That's how cautious I am about it. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Yeah, it's pretty good. It, it kind of got me a teeny tiny bit, but it's so minor that it's nobody would ever notice it. It, it kind of moved away from the back wall a little bit, right here on the very end. But I think I can just shave that. It doesn't seem to be noticeable on the front side, it's just on the back side that I can see it. It's probably there on the front side too, but I think we're okay. It's so minor. Uh, I'll take that, that's a good result, and I'm gonna stop right there while I'm ahead. Well, I got her finished finally. Oh my gosh, just so many iterations of this. Just trying to get it just right. I'm happier with that longer saddle. That looks much better. We landed on about 89, 88, somewhere in there. So it's a little under 90. And we landed a little lower than that down here. We landed about 65 down here, which I'm really surprised at. I don't know how that got so low. But uh, anyway, it may work for him. That may actually be too low. I may have to actually make yet another saddle, which would really not be fun. But you gotta do what you gotta do. I don't think it's gonna buzz. seem like it's gonna buzz. It's got a real good sound. It's a good sounding guitar. The intonation is just about spot on perfect. Now let's see what the B string turned out like after I've offset it a little bit. I didn't, I haven't checked the intonation on that. Almost dead center perfect. Look at that. It's real close to perfect. So all the strings intonate really, really well. And uh, yeah, it's set up just about as perfect as it can be set up. Up here, the action is really low. Um, I wouldn't lower it much up here. So I think we're just about done. Well, I 
if you stop and think about the whole thing, because this is probably going to be multiple part video, and if you stop and think about where we started in the first part, uh, you know, we had a neck angle that was way off. We had a bridge pad that was really crummy on the inside and chipped and broken and all that. We had a broken bridge. <laughs> So we, we did three major operations on this guitar. And as far as I'm concerned, it's near factory perfect now. Let me rephrase that. It's better than factory perfect on the intonation. <laughs> I can pretty much guarantee you that. guitar. I can just kind of fake it a little bit on YouTube. <laughs> well, I'll just clean it up a little bit again, wipe off the dust and stuff, and uh, put this thing in the case and say, it's finished. I truly hope you enjoyed this series on this Martin guitar. One of the toughest jobs I've had to do in a while, I can tell you that for sure. If you did enjoy it, please do me a favor and give me a thumbs up. And even if you're on one of them smart TVs and you say, I can't do it on a smart TV, yes, you can. All you have to do is press the up arrow and then arrow over to where the thumbs up is and then click the center button around your, you know, where your arrow's there. There's a center button, enter or whatever it's called on your remote. Click that and then you've done your job. I would appreciate it very much. There's a lot of work goes into putting these videos out, and I would very much appreciate that thumbs up. We'll see you next time.